SMT Nation, we back looking at two stories today. One from, I guess, the the general uh, telco industry, but more so focusing on Verizon. And then also looking at this uh, SpaceX Starlink service kind of update. Uh, starting with the first one, ZDNet.com. I'll go ahead and link this in the description as well as the Starlink story. Verizon customers are more miserable than T-Mobile or even AT&T's. Uh, saying here in the title, uh, just below it, Verizon's customers, the unhappiest among all the three big carriers. The reasoning is straightforward. So this is actually not a new topic. We covered this in the previous video, but the reason I wanted to cover this article specifically is that I think this is starting to pick up some steam in the, uh, I guess, related media outlets. Uh, you have companies like ZDNet as well as uh, the telecompetitor when I originally uh, reported on this article, uh, the JD Power study that came out about customer care and uh, customer pain points and being very disgruntled about their customer experience, trying to purchase a phone, calling into customer care, doing certain things. It's becoming unbearingly bad um, for Verizon customers. And this may be part of the reason why we're starting to see a lot of Verizon customers that are so disgruntled considering leaving or they already have left. And, you know, they've tried the likes of, you know, cable companies uh, and Comcast and Charter. They might be looking at AT&T and possibly T-Mobile as well. And that being the instance, you got a, an outlet like this covering a telco story such as, you know, this is a bad look. Uh, I think it's actually starting to scale like the, the customer service. I have seen more and more of those comments in my videos in regards to people switching from Verizon complaining about customer care. Just the quality of it just isn't there. And, the, you know, things are getting very difficult and challenging to get things done with, uh, you know, whatever credits and billing and, and account issues and purchases devices. And there, there's been all types of things. So the, now that we've seen the J.D. Power numbers, right, they're the worst of the big three at Verizon. And we've seen them cut back on staff and we've seen them close stores. That's not going to help the situation. They've had very low retention of customer care agents. They've got high and rapid turnover. Uh, they don't have long lasting, uh, you know, customer care reps. And the lack of training might be involved here. There's so many different things. I could tell you I've had some pretty bad uh, customer care interactions with Verizon over the last couple of years, especially in the last year. Previously, I don't really remember having many bad ones at all. Uh, I mean, eventually things have worked out, but I did have one really bad incident where I can echo the same sentiments. It's been pretty bad. So that things are starting to get pretty loud over at Verizon. Uncompetitive. You know, they're they're not really doing much to compete with the, their main competitors in AT&T and T-Mobile. And then things like this are continuing to hit the thing. It's just, just a bad look. Another thing to add insult to injury for Verizon as they continue to have negative momentum. Uh, you know, just obstacle after obstacle, not getting out of their way. So just something to report on. Uh, next story, a little bit more, I think, uh, relevant to the recent news with Starlink and T-Mobile kind of having this uh, strategic technology arrangement that they have. Uh, Starlink's massive growth results in congestion, slow speeds, for, slow speeds for some users. All right, so I do want to preface this by saying the SpaceX satellite internet service is not for everyone. There are a lot of people out there that have fiber options, have cable coaxial options. You might even have a good fixed wireless access option and like T-Mobile or Verizon or Starry Home Internet or something along those lines. This service really isn't for you. This is designed for people who have uh, either no option or only one choice and it's bad, like really, really bad DSL or uh, you know some, some kind of a horrible, awful fixed wireless option. Maybe this might be better. Uh, but uh, it's starting to show some issues here. Latency issues are creeping up. Uh, a very weak downlink speed is starting to occur more commonly with users. And uh, it looks like the network is starting to get congested. Uh, just make sure you keep in mind, right? Every cell, every satellite that's up in orbit, these low orbiting satellites, you know, they, they, there's a certain amount of usage on each one, you know, and Starlink is doing their best to probably try to like manage who they give you know, the gear to, to utilize their home internet service. But we're starting to see this more and more folks. More of the users are reporting 10 megabits per second or less for their home internet. So here's some screenshots shared by a user of the Starlink service. Here's a six megabit per second downlink, six megabit per second uplink, 
181 millisecond latency. Here's another one at four megabits and three megabits and 128. You know, yeah, I know it's satellite and it's not going to be the greatest, but the 0.7, the 0.81, that's not acceptable. That's a very slow connection. Even the other two, you're not really going to be able to do much. If you're sharing six megabits at an entire home, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. You're going to probably watch TV on that and then it might buffer and you're not really going to be able to do much after that. So uh, we're starting to see more and more of these incidents of like one megabit per second and such. And this was not happening before. So what this indicates is that Starlink has not been able to meet their standard of broadband, which they've said we're going to try to give people 50 to 200 megabits per second. And in my estimation, I think that's plenty good, uh, especially from a satellite offer. Uh, they now have somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000 customers, and they're already starting to see congestion, folks. Uh, major red flags here. Uh, very concerning. There are a lot of people who are currently on the waiting list. Uh, here's kind of a look at the availability of the service where they offer it. And then you can see some of the areas where if you've signed up for it, you're waiting. Uh, what you're waiting for are more satellites to launch so that way they can add capacity by adding more cells to the constellation. So people are seeing some pretty bad stuff. Now, some people said that they were really enjoying it. They were seeing like 160, 200 megabits per second on downlink. They were getting 30, 40, 50 megabit per second uplink. And now they're seeing, you know, speeds between one to 10 megabits. And this is not just the traditional home user. We're also talking about the Starlink RV service. Even when people are moving to different cells, they're saying that they're seeing drop-offs in performance. So at $110 per month and $600 for the hardware, it's really difficult for someone to justify spending that kind of money to not really be getting a true broadband experience that's going to be able to support their home. Now, if they could give people you know, 50 to 100 megabits, I feel like that's adequate. I feel like you're kind of getting what you're signing up for. But the under 10 megabits per second, 3 megabits, it's it's really tough to sell that. Here are some more screenshots, folks. 17 down, 11 up, 3 down, 6 up, 15 down, 7 up. And, and really the only thing I could do is going to be just to add more to the Constellation, send up more gear. They got to launch more satellites and get more capacity in the skies. I, you know, unfortunate. I'm not happy about this. I'm not rooting for this. I, I root for Starlink. I root for the people that live in the middle of nowhere that are trying to stay connected and they can continue to be competitive in the workplace and do what they want to do and support their family's connectivity. Uh, but I think this is just a painful uh, truth about the, the technologies that they, they do have an extreme limitation. And I think this also harks back to what T-Mobile and you know, Starlink, they got everybody hyped up about the service. And then they said, you know, we're going to try to offer people, you know, two to four megabits per second. They got all these technological aspects to overcome, let alone the FCC approval of, you know, different use cases and, and all of this. It is not easy to do. I do not envy these people, uh, but it is kind of, a, you know, pump the brakes kind of moment, you know, temper your expectations when it comes to these things. And I've come to that realization. I'm a huge Starlink optimist. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to pump the brakes. All right. Comment on this story, uh, what people are seeing. Again, I'm not saying everybody is seeing slowdowns, but it does seem like those slowdowns, the customers, it's their their negative sentiment is really starting to echo uh, through a lot of the media coverage on the service. You know, there's Reddit users, I'm sure, that are complaining about it. People have been commenting in my videos about it. Uh, so there's probably more issues, you know, forthcoming as more and more high user customer base, you know, terminals are getting on the network and it's, they're just gonna have to launch more satellites and we'll see when the next launch happens and how much that helps, but they're going to have to scale that. That's the hard part. Lots of technical stuff there. Let me know what you guys think of this story. Let me know what you think of the Verizon story. Love to hear what you guys have to say on this. You all the voice of the people, the SMT nation, let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter if you want to interact with us there. Uh, also, my Patreon page if you want to support us and get early access to content and exclusive videos not found anywhere else. And for business inquiries, my Gmail address in the description. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.